Hello, I am back once more to transform even more Hollow Knight characters into humans. Since this is part 2, I don't think I really need to explain what Hollow Knight is. Not that I did a good job explaining it in the first video. Luckily for this video, I don't have to go about struggling to pick characters to turn into humans cause, well, thanks to you guys, I got some good recommendations of characters to transform. I also just want to note that I saw in the comments in the last video talk about how Hornet and the Knight were genderless because they were made of the void and I'm just gonna say here, I'm sorry, I rely basically on wikis for all the bonus information while researching, so I'm sorry I made that mistake. I probably should have prefaced in the previous video as well that I like playing Hollow Knight but I'm not super familiar with all the lore and character info. I'll do my best to research stuff, but please go easy on me. If I mess anything up, tell me whatever I got wrong in the comments. Anyways, with that, let's jump right in. The first character that I saw that was recommended to me was the Hollow Knight. Man, I feel like this would get confusing. The Hollow Knight from Hollow Knight. Hmm. From just the first look, the Hollow Knight looks like a grown up version of the Knight and, well, bit corrupted. The character's posture feels as if they're tired and also gives off kind of beast-like energies to me as a following instinct. Because of the pose in the original, I decided to not have the Hollow Knight stand up straight but be very much lower in his posture as if ready to strike. The head is much the same as with the knight, albeit the horns are much 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 longer than on the knight as well as being cracked. Another notable thing was the eye color which is orange in comparison to most other characters whose eyes are black. For the eye, at first I was wondering if I should make the entire eye hole orange like in the original design, but I later decided to have it be smaller as the pupils of the one underneath the helmet. Aside from adding the large crack we see on the original, I also added some other scratches on the helmet to show how worn down it is. The cloak worn by the Hollow Knight is wrapped around on its body in a very unique way and honestly feels very much like a scarf. The cloak reaches from the base of the helmet down to around the forearm and goes down even more on their left side. And yes, I know the Hollow Knight only has one arm, but I forgot about that while drawing so uh, let's just ignore those fingers down there. Their entire body is fully black with notable segmentations between each limb which translates really well into armor. I somewhat exaggerate the differences between the joints with leather underneath to further show the segmentation of the armor, as well as to give a somewhat bug-like quality to it. I know how in the previous video I talked about how I decided on the black parts of the body being equivalent to something like leather armor, but the strong visibility of segmentation made me feel like it would be better to have it be metal armor. I also took the recommendation from the previous video about making the armor a darker tone, which I kind of regret not doing with the Knight and Hornet, especially since black toned armors in real life look mwah, absolutely gorgeous. Something else interesting I learned was the orange growth on their chest that gets hidden by the cloak which fires projectiles of infected on the player. You can't see it because of the pose I drew but I thought I should still mention it and if I were to draw it I would likely have it be like bulbous growth like fungus which leaks out from the cracks of the armor but obviously that's not something I have to worry about drawing since it's not shown in my drawing. I decided to be a little extra with gradients and adding gradient maps to the drawing to make it a bit fancier and with that, this is how I think the Hollow Knight would look as a human. Pretty cool looking if I do say so myself, so I definitely should have pushed how lanky they are in my drawing since it does feel kind of lacking in that regard. The next character I saw recommended were the Mantis Lords and this one is going to be interesting cause it's a trio now. Surprisingly, I've never really drawn an illustration with more than one character in it. Not sure why, so my big struggle with this one is putting all three of them together without looking out of place. Since, at least from what I can tell, all three of them have the exact same design, I went about fully completely drawing one of the Mantis Lords to get an understanding of the design before working on the others. For the helmet, as in the original, there's a large distinction between the face and the rest of the head. I did the same with the helmet for the human form where the entire front part is a separate section of the helmet that can move. That and the color difference helps make it have the same distinction as the original and makes the front part feel partially like a mask. I imagine the horn 
going to be pointing backwards like in the original design and with the perspective as well as the posing I chose for the mantis lord it resulted in the horns not being as long if anybody was wondering why the horns weren't as long as in the original. I also got a comment in the last video talking about lots of different armor types that would be good as reference and it's honestly very cool learning about new types of armor like the Hussar armor as well as the names of other armors I recognize but obviously don't know what kind of type they specifically are. So uh, thank you for that. But I also apologize. You gave me recommendations for the armor to reference for the Hollow Knight but by the time I saw the comment I had already finished the drawing. For the Hollow Knight. Which is why instead I'm going to use those references on the Mantis Lord's armor. The Hussar armor I found particularly interesting and thought it would look nice as the torso armor, with the segmentation being a good equivalent of the segmentation found on the body of the Mantis Lord. The overall shape I gave the Mantis Lord is, for the most part, very flowy, which gives the character a sense of agility as seen with the original design. Midway through doing the line art, I realized how dumb I was and used the symmetry tool to do the line art, which brought forth just how unsymmetrical my previous line art and sketch was. So. That was fun. Using the symmetry tool saved me so much time with the line art and I am really glad I used it. I also added this cape thing hanging from the waist of the armor to mimic the protruding abdomen seen in the Mantis Lords. I also went and changed the shape of the fold. Yes, I had to search up what that was called. And made them less square and instead go towards a point to make it a sharper shape and help emphasize the speed as well as because it felt too much like Japanese armor. I do wonder if I should have kept the folds or removed them because it looks slightly out of place in the design but I just chose to keep them. I actually had to go around changing small bits of many other parts as well such as the horns and make them slightly thinner and also change the direction the spikes protruded a bit to make them feel more like mantis claws. For the weapon, it's likely a lance as is used by many other characters but for me, I felt that a weapon more like a rapier would fit better with the character but that might be too big of a change. As such, I just made some minor adjustments to the lance like shortening the grip as well as adding a small flare to the end of the main part to make it so that the shape of the lance is somewhat akin to that of a rapier. After finishing the Mantis Lords, I was genuinely tempted to just copy and paste them a couple of times to get the trio. You know what? Screw it. I'm lazy. So with the help of Boon Shin no Jutsu, now there's three of them. I know I said I was gonna draw three of them, but I don't have the patience to draw two more of them. I'm really sorry. I hope the one I drew did a good enough job to make up for it. If this has been interesting so far, please like and maybe even subscribe. I will really appreciate it since it means I'm doing something right, I think. The next character is one that I saw while researching the previous characters and I thought they looked very interesting. Who am I talking about? Well, the one in question is Greymourner. By the way, I don't know how to pronounce their real name so I'm just gonna stick with Greymourner. And I'm just gonna be fully honest with you. I was kinda excited to draw her mainly because I just wanted to draw a pretty girl and maybe I could have done it with the Mantis Lords but they're warriors and I wanted them to wear full armor. But then again, Grey Mourner was one of the 5 great knights so their outfit does seem more like a dress rather than armor. I feel like I'm just digging myself deeper and deeper into a hole with my logic I'm giving. Man, I just want to draw a pretty female character that's not fully covered in armor, okay? <clears throat> Luckily their design is honestly already very human-like, so very simplified, so it was pretty simple transferring that into a full human design. I also went to check what Grimoner was, to which I got varying results. From Mossback's video, he implies that it is likely some kind of wilted flower, while I also saw posts elsewhere indicating that they may be based off a of silverfish. I'm not sure which one they are, but either way, because I don't have a conclusive answer, it really didn't help me with the designing process. I was also an idiot while drawing and it was only after I finished drawing the rough that I noticed I forgot to start recording my time lapse. So here's the rough before I go into the actual time lapse. I personally really like the shape of the character and how it spreads outward as we go to the floor. I was able to have this in a human form by having what I assume to be hair on the design be, well, hair. Just very, very long hair that spreads out everywhere as well as a long dress that does the same. 
Grey Morning was honestly a really good practice experience for drunk hair, so I had fun with it. As she was someone in mourning, I had her have a sadder expression while looking at the delicate flowers they were holding. The way the antennas, stem, hair, whatever they are, honestly left them the way they were and just treated them as if they were equivalent to those hair attachments or highlights done by people. In the original, those things go slightly upward before falling down while for mine, it just goes straight down and while not intentional, the way they just fall downward really does add to the mournful and sad emotion given off by the character. With the closing, I was trying to figure out how I should have the pattern look and I kept it generally the same with only minor changes that I thought would fit. I had a large collar pattern around the neck be used twice in the shape of the sleeves as well as the collar of the clothes. I also chose to not have the line pattern reach all the way to the collar but have a split around the mid torso where there are frills and have the lines appear below. This was mainly just cause I thought it would look nicer than to have the same pattern go all the way up the closing. When coloring, I wasn't fully sure what colors their hair and clothing were so I used a color picker and it turned out much much pinker than I thought. In the original, it looks very cool and bluish toned but from the color picker, it was very pink. Color theory man, I don't understand it. I had to go back and adjust the colors to make them much cooler in tone to match the original despite me having color picked the original colors. With that, Grey Mourner is complete. Grey Mourner was overall simpler in that there wasn't much to design because of the simplicity of the clothing but lots to draw in terms of the flowy hair and dress so how does she look? Pretty? And with that, all of the characters chosen this time turned into humans. Man, compared to the last video, I'm struggling to fit all the characters fully onto screen together with one another. I think compared to the previous part, I leveled up a bit in my drawing quality and the posing for the characters. What do you think? There's still lots of characters in Hollow Knight as well as many other games I could draw so if there are any specific characters, games or ideas you want, comment it below. I am working on one for a different game right now but I'm not sure when I'll be done with that one so we'll just have to see. Well, that's all for today. See you next time. Bye bye.